From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, from your city to the world and beyond. This is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Welcome to Alpha City News. This is Craig Allen. In today's stories, House of Mushrooms Lost to Flames, Tricky Dick Feeds the Homeless, Bonko Spins Jenny Back to Cops, Black Maria Wilts Flower, Clockwork Craziness on Cove Avenue, Assault on the House of Odd, and more. The day started badly on Restaurant Row when the fire department was called out to fight a blaze that consumed the hot new mushroom-centric eatery, Basidiome. Basidiome, the brainchild of celebrity restaurateur Barker Clowey and fungal genius and ex-supervillain John Maldive, also known as the Mushroom Man, was completely consumed by the fire. Two things caught the eye of fire investigators, though, leading them to believe that this was no accident, and that Basidiom and Mr. Maldive were the target of an attack. First, the fire, hot enough to utterly destroy the structure of the restaurant, and even melt items therein that should have been intact from a normal fire, did not spread beyond the bounds of the restaurant itself. In the words of Fire Marshal Maynard, a fire of this intensity should have taken out most of the block, but... For some reason, it didn't go beyond this one property. The second, or direct evidence of foul play, was the word traitor, burned into the concrete outside the destroyed building with living magma. All evidence would point to one of Mr. Maldives' old supervillain compatriots, the subterranean, as taking exception to the mushroom man's attempt to run an above-board business. To quote Mr. Maldives, Simon, that is, the subterranean, did not react well 18 years ago when I told him I was no longer interested in fighting the world. He called me a traitor then, and I believe he is repeating that epithet now. Simon, just like my younger self, is consumed with anger at a world he feels slighted him, but he does not seem to have lost the fire as I have. I can only thank Providence that the building was destroyed with no loss of life. I could not forgive myself, nor Simon, if death had been the result of his anger towards me. I can only hope that we might be able to talk before he does something for which there can be no forgiveness. Measured words from a man who lost a dream to the fire last night, and we at Alpha City echo his hope that the rage of the subterranean is interned for the first time in years on our fair city. The first Knoxon for Mayor event took place Tuesday, as mayoral hopeful Richard Tricky Dick Knoxon spent an evening helping to serve food at the 4th Avenue homeless shelter. As cameras flashed, the former supervillain, dressed in jeans and a collared shirt with the sleeves rolled up, dished out bread and goulash to more than 200 indigent men and women. Knoxon said, There is a reason I chose this as my first stop on the campaign trail instead of a fundraising dinner. Alpha City is doing well, very well. We have an educated citizenry, a devoted public sector, and are better off financially than many cities in our fine country. But every night, more than 30,000 of our fellow citizens sleep in homeless shelters, and an estimated 10 to 12,000 more sleep rough on the streets. More than 1,000 soup kitchens feed them each night, and over the course of a single year, more than 100,000 people will experience homelessness. Over a third of these will be children. There are more than 5 million Alpha citizens, according to the last census, but every night, a population equal to Hackensack, New Jersey, is homeless in our city. We are not doing enough. As mayor, social services in Alpha City will be one of my top priorities. The job of being mayor in Alpha City, in a city of wonders, is to help everyone to have as good a life as possible, not just those who make campaign contributions. I intend the next wonder of Alpha City to be how few of its citizens are left behind. Now, if you will excuse me, I need to help get the shelter organized for the night. Say what you will about his past, 
Candidate Noxon is making bold claims for the future. Bonko the Clown captured villainous Spinning Jenny as she attempted to rob the Astro World Amusement Park today, following her escape from police and Roman the Human Robot last week. Spinning Jenny and the grease-painted hero fought across the length of the park before Bonko managed to immobilize the villainess with a well-targeted, quick-setting maple syrup balloon. The owners of the park were quick to thank the baggy-pantsed protector, and just as quick to ask him to leave the park, as he was frightening the children. Good work, Bonko, and stay out of my neighborhood. A Flower, the Lady of Peace, came close to stopping a kidnapping perpetrated by the new villainess Black Maria. Black Maria put the snatch on one Hiram Manukian, 56, an executive with the Central State Insurance, as he was about to enter his place of work Friday morning. As the obsidian evildoer tried to make her escape, A Flower managed to separate Manukian from his kidnapper. A Flower interposed herself between Black Maria and her prey, managing to keep the two apart as she attempted to talk the dark criminal out of her intended action. Black Maria seemed reluctant to physically engage with the Lady of Peace, attempting only to get Manukian in her grasp again, despite having previously shown the raw power and skill needed to hold off three members of the Hero Union at the same time. After being denied repeatedly by A Flower's Super Aikido, Black Maria suddenly faced A Flower squarely, bowed, and, according to bystanders, did one of those dance things that Neo and Morpheus did before they fight in the Matrix. Somehow this startled A Flower to the extent that she was caught off guard by Black Maria's next strike. While A Flower attempted to recover from the blow, Black Maria once again latched onto Manukian and made good her escape. While speaking to police about the incident, A Flower is reported to have said that Black Maria's movements indicated that the villainess, quote, knew something, a fighting style, which was impossible for her to be conversant in. As of now, no ransom has been asked for Mr. Manukian, nor has Black Maria been reported anywhere in the city. Jackie Quick had a final showdown with Dr. Metrodome in the Red Bank neighborhood today when she used a tracker planted amongst the diamonds that Dr. Metronome absconded with last week. Finding the bad doctor in a sub-basement of the clock factory on Cove Avenue, Miss Quick burst upon the hidden workshop just before Metronome could activate the fiendish device for which all of his recent crimes have been in service of. The machine would have covered all of Alpha City and nearby suburbs through the city's electrical grid, essentially extending his clockwork ray over several square miles. With the entire population turned into clockwork automatons, Dr. Metronome would have been free to loot the city with impunity. Thanks to the quick, no pun intended, actions of the Queen of Speed, however, Metronome's device was disconnected from the grid and could only alter the workers within the walls of the factory. Even faced with a legion of clockwork adversaries, Jackie Quick showed that she had learned from her previous encounters with Metronome. As the doctor attempted to catch her in the clockwork ray, she used a mirror, previously acquired from Anders Brightman, the Bright Man, to deflect the ray at the transformed workers, instantly reversing the effect. Metronome found himself without help and was no match for Ms. Quick. Although he attempted the same defense he used when stealing the diamonds, namely trying to make Jackie Quick's speed an impediment in the crowded workroom, she had learned from that encounter as well, and nimbly avoided every trap the doctor tried to spring. Even so, Metronome managed to exit the building, only to find himself clotheslined by the waiting mechanical Bill, whose aid Jackie Quick had enlisted. While police thanked both of the heroes, Mechanical Bill made it clear that he thought Ms. Quick was due the lion's share of the accolades. I was only here as a bit of backup, since Jackie knew her enemy well enough to plan for his schemes. 
honestly if she tied a rope at ankle height outside his escape door before going in after him, she wouldn't have needed me at all. Although I am always happy to help, of course. As for the lady herself, she praised Mechanical Bill's humility and publicly thanked the bright man for building the mirror she used for defense. And now, she said, reportedly sporting a huge grin, it's time to give Anders back his looking glass. And she sped off, knowing Dr. Betronome was secure in the arms of Alpha City PD. I say good work, all three of them. Northchester County was the scene of a pitched battle today as the anti-odd mob, made up of Crankor from Space Lemuria, Mean Average, Mr. Thirteenth Floor, Clamp, Octo Squid, and Stringlass attempted to take over the Odd Institute for the Strangely Gifted, believing that it was unguarded. Fortunately for the children housed at the Institute, members of both the Legion of Odd and the Odd Squad were in attendance, and so the anti-Odd mob found themselves stopped just inside the front gate of the school's grounds. Faced with the combined might of the one-man dance crew, Mini Moose, Oddball, The River Dancer, Pencil Test, Gunk, and Mondo Mayhem, the mob was sent fleeing, tails between their legs in short order. Though most of the mob did escape, Clamp and Stringlass were captured and turned over to the North Chester County Sheriff's Office. The High Frontiersman and the Space Cowboy caused a bit of a light show over Miles Bay last night as they worked together to corral a rogue comet headed for our planet. The comet, large enough to resist burning up in orbit, was caught in an energy net between the two heroes, accepting a small portion which broke off and sank into Miles Bay. The frontiersman and the cowboy carefully lowered the remainder of the comet into the waiting arms of the Eisner University Astrophysics Department, where it will be studied carefully. And now we have a traffic update. Getting around the city might be a bit of a trial today. In Floptown, Loomis Avenue is shut down from 6th to 9th Streets, as Jungle Jane covered those blocks with a quick-growing jungle flora during her battle against Heartstrike yesterday. The Green Sky Car Line has been closed as IT workers attempt to clear a virus which made the sky cars on that line self-aware, implanted in them by Mechanicus. And Subway Tube 3 has been coated with tar by Hot Bucket. Plan your commute accordingly, Alpha Citizens. Empyrean and Captain Stupendous reportedly went head-to-head -head against the Nitro Genie, deposed ruler of Titan, in Saturn orbit over the course of several hours on Wednesday. Nitro Genie was released from his gravity prison by the last of the free methane men, after a coalition of space heroes routed their invasion fleet and cleaned up their last hideout on Titan. The Nitro Genie, master of Titanian magic, managed to hold his own against the might of Captain Stupendous and the universal dynamism of Empyrean for far longer than any of the observers at Moonbase Selene would have thought possible. But in the end, the Nitro Genie was bottled again, while the tracker from Titan mopped up the very last vestiges of the Methane Man. All three are reported to be heading back to Alpha City, and we will be glad to have them return. A temporal anomaly appeared over Eisner University Thursday morning, which the professors in the university's paraphysics lab quickly identified as a possible signal that the preceptor of ancient history would be manifesting soon. The preceptor is from the 68th century and invariably attempts to cause various forms of mayhem apparently trying to prove a theory about how changes to the past affect the flow of time. It seems that whatever theory the preceptor is trying to prove might actually be correct, as each time the preceptor has returned to our time, they have had varied physical appearance, shifting between genders, races, sporting various forms of cybernetic enhancements, and at least once appearing as a reptilian humanoid. 
The various times the preceptor has been captured, they have refused to believe this, insisting that their current trip to the past was the only that they had made. While the preceptor finally came through the anomaly just before noon, it appeared as an inhumanly tall, gray-skinned male with an extra eye and extra arms. The Conundrum Corporation, which had been alerted to the anomaly by Professor Angstrom, kept the preceptor from fully manifesting and managed to close the anomaly with no more trouble than expected. And now, on this week's Super Combat Scorecard... Big Weird Joe came upon a group of men trying to light a homeless person on fire. This group of men are now in stable condition at Westside Fellows Hospital. Red Warlock managed to stop a manifestation of the Griffin by removing the Griffin pendant from the citizen who had been mind-controlled to wear it. The Fog stopped Disco Biscuit from ruining the Chariots of Hypocrisy concert at Thunder Hall Monday evening. Space Hippie Larch Cosmic Groove stopped a rampage of bad vibes by the frightening Mr. Splendid in Everdale Square Mall on Saturday. Private Investigator Rouvert Lachienne Fido solved the case of the tap dancing skeleton returning the gems stolen from the skeleton's forehead and sternum to the Museum of Art. Izar of the Neo-Deities arrived in Alpha City by sidereal slide and spoke to boy photographer Johnny Munson, apparently trying to find exegesis of the Neo-Deities who had appeared in Alpha City last week. Presto the Witch investigated an appearance of the Eldritch Hidden House in Bakersley and was reportedly inside when the house vanished again. We wish her good luck. Department of Homeland Security Power Armor officers were in town, helping the League of Nations security detail with preparations for the arrival of Jana Ball, emissary of Atlantis, next month. Anders Breitman and Mando Church worked together unraveling a complex con game and blackmail scheme being run on Finance Row, involving fake psychics and ghosts. The Bridge Thief once again attempted to steal the 5th Street Bridge and was foiled by Gargantua. And finally, the Bowery Legion mixed it up with what appeared to be some of the Emperor of America's Minutemen, leading to speculations that the Emperor is planning to try another cross-dimensional invasion. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Alpha City News is produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds are provided by newsbeds.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please share them with us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can download us on iTunes, at Stitcher, at Libsyn, or on SoundCloud, and find us at wordpress.com under Alpha City News. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a super day, Alpha Citizen.